uh, in general, uh, you have heard about that CPAs uh, that they are doing taxes. CPAs, certified public accountant, uh, normally they don't do, uh, in general, they shouldn't do taxes because their job is more auditing. And auditing is the main job that they, they are going to be, they, have, uh, they are hired. Uh, then uh, doing taxes, you can get a PTIN number from uh, federal, uh, prepared tax identification number from the federal to do taxes. Uh, but the license above that is close to CPA is enrolled agent. Enrolled agent is the same procedure doing uh, getting the license uh, from the IRS. It takes about uh, when I got it in 2013, I think. Uh, uh, no, 2004. Sorry about that. 2004 or five. When I got that one, it was two days uh, test in the morning, in the afternoon, in the so, and it was once a year. And the, the, I, if I wanted to tell you that when you are enrolled agent, it's kind of like that I can practice before IRS. If you get audited, you can like a lawyer. You tell them that, okay, I'm not gonna go, come. If it get audited and if you are arguing and then it goes to the court, uh, the tax court, then I can practice. I can go uh, uh, with you or I can go, you sign the paper that Hedy is gonna represent me and, uh, talk about the cases. That's a license enrolled agent that uh, is a prestigious license. Uh, none of the tax preparer uh, uh, do have it, but uh, it's, uh, I, I just told you that we, I am enrolled agent is just focusing on taxes, not auditing, not a, 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 we are not auditors. We are just taxes. Okay, I think that's enough for that. Okay, should I go and share my screen? Yes, please, you have full control. Mm -hmm. And so uh, just uh, uh, help me to, uh, to share my screen and I need to open my, um, let me just see. I need to open my spreadsheet. My presentation, I mean the presentation. Let me just see if I can go here on the right side that here, okay, yeah. And Okay, can you see that? Can you see my screen? Yes, 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 yes. we can. Yeah, good, 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 good. Yes, uh, uh, again, hi to everybody. Thank you for having me. Uh, it is a little late for <laughs> having presentation. I had it, uh, those people that they remember me, I, normally I had it in February. And then you have more time uh, for uh, if you have question and just call me and ask me. But anyway, uh, I'm Hedy Jafari. I was financial manager and HR manager at UCSD for 25 years. In 20, in 2000, I started my uh, doing practicing taxes uh, beside my uh, work working at UCSD. And so I am retired right now. Uh, three years ago, I decided to retire and I'm focusing on my, on my business right now. Uh, I'm doing taxes for around 500 people a year and 15, uh, 20 corporations and partnership, trust and uh, state, I mean, and uh, LLCs. So uh, I'm, uh, right now, uh, today, I decided to talk about uh, a little bit about individual and a little bit about how to start a business. Uh, uh, procedure and the uh, regulation. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the new forms in 2022, standard deduction, social security and Medicare, rental property, and 1031 exchange. If you're interested, anytime, you can stop me and ask me question. <clears throat> Number one form that you're gonna, and you have already received the form 
it's uh, something new uh, because last year, <clears throat> Uh, state of California decided to send money, like uh, I should call it that uh, stimulus money, like uh, that we received before. Uh, they decided that they, since they charge uh, taxes on gas a lot, a lot uh, is uh, uh, completely higher than other states, and that's the reason that uh, or gas is the most expensive, I think, uh, in the country. They decided to send money out of that uh, gas tax uh, to people. Uh, it was approved uh, in April last year. Uh, governors signed that one in October, and we started getting those money, those people that they were qualified. Uh, the, the difference, it's a single, married, and one car, two cars, based on 2020, your 2020 uh, year 2020 tax income uh, of your income. So people that they got it 350 or 700 or 1000, they reported on 1099 miscellaneous. There was a debate between <clears throat> uh, IR, the IRS and state of California uh, uh, that uh, the federal wanted to tax that one to us and the state was fighting <laughs> that it, it shouldn't be taxed. Can you hear me? Is that okay? Uh, finally, a state uh, won that one, and it's not a taxable money. But uh, if you have received, because they started in October to send them money, the, the way that they send it, it was either if you had direct deposit on your uh, 2021 taxes and they had the bank account, uh, they send the money to your bank, or they send a debit card. Uh, with the logo of California, and they loaded the money. It's a debit card. Either way, uh, still coming because they started, uh, although that it was uh, approved uh, in April, signed by uh, uh, Governor Newsom in in September. Uh, but uh, how to handle it? Uh, they started in October, and still some people they haven't received is it, coming. If you have received it in 2022. You should have a 1099 miscellaneous. You you open uh, if you are doing your taxes yourself. You open a 1099 miscellaneous. You put that 700, 350, whatever, and you mark it. There's a box that this is uh, money from the state of California. There is uh, boxes that it is stimulus uh, 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 help from California. You uh, that you mark that box. Then it's not going to be taxable to you guys. So finally, state one uh, over the IRS that it shouldn't be taxed. <clears throat> so if you haven't received the form or you haven't received the money, uh, some people say, no, I, we haven't received the money, but you need to check your bank account. As I said, it's still coming. So if you don't have the form, you don't put anything. Of course, <clears throat> then we go to the standard deduction. The standard deduction increased by, I think, 400 this year, uh, single uh, or married filing separately. A standard deduction is 12,950. Filing jointly is going to be double, 25,900. And if you are head of household, a standard deduction is 19,400. If uh, I, uh, uh, for people that they are over 65, uh, almost uh, all of us, uh, except Mania, <laughs> uh, that we are retired, so we get additional 1,400 uh, per person. If it's head of household, only 1750, but if you're married, uh, finding jointly, each, uh, each one, uh, you're gonna get 1400 uh, additional to that. Okay. And the, the, uh, the limit for uh, so paying social security, if you are still active and working, uh, the social security tax is maximum 147,000. Uh, if you are making 200, you don't pay tax, uh, social security more than 140,000 of your income. Uh, Medicare, there is no limit. You have to pay the Medicare. Medicare uh, rate is 1.45%. Social security is 6.2%. So 7.65% uh, when you are when we were working at UCSD and whatever it was, oh, we, uh, and people right now we pay uh, employee they pay 7.65%. UCSD or other uh, employer they match this number and they send it to the IRS. 
uh, and they call it social security tax or Medicare tax. I'm not uh, okay with that tax for that because it's not a tax. Uh, tax means that we pay the government and we don't get it back. But this is the money that we pay the government and we are getting back. Social security is like a saving account. So uh, as much as you paid uh, when you are retired based on your uh, age, 65, 66, right now is 67 is the uh, retirement time for people that they are younger. Uh, we are gonna get this money back monthly. Uh, and Medicare is gonna qualify us for uh, Medicare. So these are not a tax, but they call it self-employment or social security and Medicare tax. Uh, if you are self-employed, uh, if you are independent contractor for those people that they are self-employed, uh, they need to pay that 6.2% twice because they are, they, they are the employee, they are the employer. So they pay 12.4% 12, 12, uh, social security and they pay twice 1.45, 2.9, percent of Medicare. So going to the next. Uh, you know that uh, to be qualified for Social Security and Medicare, we should have 40 points. Uh, each year that we pay Social Security and Medicare, we are eligible, uh, we are getting four points and we have already had that. So, and uh, Right now, uh, in 2022, if you wanted to get your four points, you should pay Social Security on a minimum $6,580. Uh, $6, uh, so you should have Social Security on that one. So the early retirement is 62 years that you can apply for early retirement. Full retirement age right now is 67. Uh, for people that uh, they are in a range of 50, 60 years old, is 67. And the maximum, the latest that we can retire is 70. Uh, we get the maximum social security when we turn 70. After that, nobody should wait to uh, get the social security because uh, the social security is not gonna increase. Between, if, you, uh, if someone decide to take the social security, at the age of early retirement, 62, uh, it's gonna be 30% less than full retirement. Uh, say um, uh, if your social security at the full retirement is $2,000, if you start taking out at early retirement, so you're gonna get 600 less, you're gonna get 1400 only. And at the age of 70, you're gonna get the maximum. If you don't start at 67 or 64, 66 or 67 every year is going to increase and uh, I have seen it uh, between 67 uh, full retirement and year 70 monthly you're going to based on your in, uh, retirement or social security almost about four five hundred dollars more you are going to have that money uh, monthly uh, then other retirements is traditional IRA Roth IRA or SEP IRA an employer sponsor retirement is 401a, 401k, 403b, and profit sharing is another retirement for self employed people. Uh, traditional IRA, you know that 59 and a half. Uh, when you turn 59 and a half, you can start taking out your retirement without any penalty. Um, Roth IRA, uh, uh, traditional IRA is subject to, uh, to income tax because it was pre-tax, you didn't pay any taxes. Uh, but Roth IRA, as you know, uh, is after tax when you contributed, it was after tax and you are not gonna pay taxes at all. Uh, the diff, the, uh, another, uh, this is the first difference between traditional and Roth IRA. The second uh, most important part is uh, when you have traditional IRA or 403B or 401K, uh, the M. Uh, MR, uh, RMD required mandatory distribution. Uh, before it was at age uh, 70, you were required to start withdrawing from your retirement. Uh, during the COVID, uh, they increased that one. They, they just put a hold, uh, not to force people to take money out. And uh, last year or the year before, they increased that uh, to 72 years. 
So we are not subject to RMD, required mandatory distribution, uh, until we turn 72. Uh, the difference between ROD and traditional, ROD doesn't have RMD. You cannot, you are not, uh, you don't have, uh, they're not pushing you to, you have option just whenever you want it. And uh, when you started taking out, you can be 75, 80 or whenever, whatever, or leave it uh, for your kids. And it's not subject to any taxes because you didn't have any advantages when you put it the money. And uh, of course, uh, I'm sure that you know that when you open a Roth IRA, uh, it, it kind of is going to be vested after five years. Uh, after five years, uh, it's going to be tax free for, uh, and then at the age of 59 and a half after that, you can take it, uh, the principal and the gain, everything is tax free. SEP IRA is for uh, businesses also. So next is, uh, there we have two different kinds of credits that the people are asking always about that. So well, there is the two kind of uh, credits that we have on taxes. Some are refundable credits, some are non-refundable credit. What is the difference? Refundable credit means that uh, it can bring your taxes. Uh, imagine that you owe uh, your tax, not owe. Your taxes is 5,000 and you have a credit for student or for different things or solar. So that can bring your taxes to zero and still you are gonna get the difference. So your income tax is 10,000, you have a credit for 15,000. So your, your tax is gonna be zero and you're gonna get 5,000 5, also. Non-refundable -refund credit is uh, when you, that those credits can bring your taxes to zero, but you are not going to get the difference uh, additional that you have. You cannot say that, oh, my credit was 15 and I just, my tax was 10,000, give me my another additional 5,000. No, we call them non-refundable credit. Lifetime educational credit, which is $2,000, is a non-refundable. If your tax is zero, you're not going to get anything. Dependent care benefits is a non-refundable. Uh, earned income credit is a non-refundable. Capital gain taxes. Uh, the rate for capital gain tax uh, is either 0% uh, or 15% or 20%. Uh, when is the capital gain tax is 0%? If you're single and your adjusted gross income is less than 41,000, including the capital gain, if it's everything is 40, less than 41,000, then you're not going to pay any capital gain taxes. And if you're filing married filing jointly and your adjusted gross income is double than that, 83,350, you sell the stocks and you make 2,000, 3,000, it's going to be zero tax. Uh, so that's a zero tax, a capital gain. Um, if you are, of course, these are, I'm talking about long-term capital gain, not short-term. Because short-term capital gain, it goes as an ordinary income to your other income and you pay based on your bracket. Uh, the next step is, uh, this is all uh, about AGI, adjusted gross income. If, uh, if you are making single between 41,000 to 459,000, the capital gain, long-term capital gain tax is 15%. And if you are married and making between 83 and 517, then your capital gain tax is 15. And if it's more than 459,000 or 517, the maximum long-term capital gain is 20%. So it is almost uh, uh, have benefits for us if we are going to sell something that we see that there is uh, gain on that, wait until one year and one day. Then you're going to go, if your bracket based on your income, social security, retirement from university, other retirement, traditional, if you're going to be in a higher bracket than 0%, 15%, or 20%, then it's better to wait and uh, sell it as a long term, not uh, sell it as a short. So, any questions so far?
We have several in the chat. Okay. Um, so let me read them. The first one was from Kaylin. Uh, as a San Diego County resident, because of the FEMA emergency, um, are they correct that they don't have to submit 2023 estimated tax payments that they normally do okay. um, in April, June, September? Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, that's a, a good question. And uh, again, uh, uh, they uh, announced California was one of those states that announced a state of emergency because of rain and snow. Uh, they uh, said that you even you can file your taxes until October 16. You don't need to file for any extension. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading this, telling you from this uh, IRS website. Uh, it says that you can file, you don't need to pay taxes if you owe, you don't need to pay estimated taxes, everything that there's, uh, all the penalty has been waived, uh, have been waived. And you can even, you can file your taxes by October 16. You don't need to file for an extension, but there is a sentence when I read that one, for those who have been impacted by rain and snow. That's why uh, with my client, I'm not taking any responsibility if the IRS or California is going to ask for any documentation. So I'm telling everybody, yes, it says that you don't need to file taxes. You have extra time until October 16. You don't need to pay estimated taxes. You don't need, if you owe taxes, you don't need to pay that. You're not going to be subject to penalty and interest. Uh, if you file your taxes by uh, uh, October 16, if you have been impacted by snow and rain. Are they coming to ask for any documentation? It's a gray area. I don't know. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm telling my uh, clients that I'm not going to take any responsibility. If they're going to charge you later on and say, oh, you file taxes late, you pay the same taxes late, uh, that's not my uh, problem because the, uh, that's the really gray uh, area and the census. Many people, they said, uh, to be honest with you, all of my clients, even that they owed money, they have already come and filed taxes. Uh, but uh, some people, they said, no, it's not uh, possible that they can ask for, uh, it's not easy that uh, to ask everybody to provide a documentation. But yes, that to, to answer to that question, it is correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes, their follow-up question was that they don't need to submit 2022 SCP yeah. IRA contribution, yeah. Okay, sure. uh, the next question was, who was responsible for calculating RMDs? Them or the company? Company. So the company normally, if we, uh, 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 at UCSD, we are mostly with Fidelity. Fidelity, TD Ameritrade, whoever you have the fund, uh, your retirement or at, uh, IRA or something, normally they send the letter to you in October or November and notify you based on, because they have access to your portfolio and they know how much you need to take out. So uh, it is based on, it is not based on your income that they don't have it. It's based on your age, and your portfolio. Uh, they calculate that one, they notify you that you need to withdraw by December 31st, this much money. Vanya, could I ask a follow-up since I asked that question? Of course. Oh, uh, hi, thank you for your presentation. I really enjoyed sure. it so far. Um, uh, Fidelity, like you said, sent me checks in uh, January for the RMDs, but, um, but um, the other company, T. Rowe Price, did not. So I I, I uh, had to call them up and, and ask them why they haven't you sent me anything as Fidelity. They just said, well, you're so I'm responsible for locating, no, no, notifying them about my uh, what I want my my money to do. But that, but they didn't calculate anything for me. T Rowe Price. Okay, uh, that's a good uh, uh, question and concern uh, because uh, as I said, uh, since we work with universe for university. Uh, I'm dealing with Fidelity, and right. as you mentioned, Fidelity sent the note or the check. Uh, I, what I heard from all of my clients, they all says that, okay, they get notification in advance, or they send a check and then they receive a 1099R. So 
uh, how do you know to uh, how much your portfolio is how much uh, i know that you we know our, our portfolio but how much is the rate based on our age and all of those things uh, that's that's the two different companies that they provide different services right so t roy price told me that a uh, good thing that i called because i needed to do this uh, rmd before april 1st this year uh -huh. So well, that's great. I'm glad I did call and uh, thank you. And they're going to send me a check now, but they did, they did calculate for me finally, but only after I called them. Yes. Yes. Okay. So we learned that uh, 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 financial companies, they are different. So uh, uh, in general, uh, as uh, this gentleman says that we need to pay uh, to be proactive and contact them that I have turned 72. Uh, there is another uh, uh, discussion that they're going to increase it to 73 years uh, because the life expectation, you know, RMD is based on life expectation. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, haven't heard that it has been approved or not. But right now, the year that you turn 72, uh, you are subject to RMD. And thank you very much for telling other me and other uh, people right now to know that we need to be proactive. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Dean, did you have a question? I see you unmuted. Uh, yes. It was in addition to the information about the RMDs. Um, you mentioned that you have to pay this by April. And that's true your first year, but that also means you're going to have to pay again in December for the you're, you're paying for last year, now you're gonna to have to pay for this year. So if you haven't reached that point yet, you might wanna contact your um, banks or investment people uh, and so the previous <clears throat> fall, because you have the option of paying it the previous December and avoiding two payments in your first year, which can really throw off you know, what tax bracket you're in. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I learned that the hard way because I didn't find out until April. Okay. Thank, thanks for sharing that. Are there other questions or comments right now before uh, he continues? I don't see any. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing your information with me and with uh, other uh, friends. Okay, we get to rental income and loss. Uh, I th this is maybe better uh, uh, discussion about uh, retiree from UCSD. Uh, and there is a possibility that you have a rental property. And uh, hopefully you, you do have it. Um, and so um, there was always question that they said that, especially during the uh, COVID uh, season that People they said, oh, I didn't, I haven't received the rent because it's on hold. Uh, should I claim a loss? And I said, no, there is no loss on rental. Yeah, if your rent is two uh, two thousand a month, twenty four thousand, and you didn't receive for four months or six months, you don't report uh, that uh, those uh, months that you didn't get it. Uh, so because we are all cash based taxpayer. So we report the um, uh, our income when we receive it. So and, uh, loss on a rental property, uh, in, in general, when you buy a property and you start a, in, an investment, the first couple of years, if, you, uh, if your property has property tax, mortgage interest, HOA, those kind of things, uh, in general, it should be negative is not gonna be a positive for positive income. It's gonna be negative. Um, and, uh, but I, eventually that you pay mortgages in the 10 years, 15 years, your property is gonna be positive. I saw one client uh, today that uh, his uh, rental uh, was about 25,000 positive because uh, the, it's paid off. Uh, it has been bought 20 years ago. The uh, property tax is really low. But you need to keep in mind, in your mind, that uh, the maximum loss that we can claim is 25,000 every year uh, based on our income. 
if our income is 50,000 uh, to 100,000, uh, 50,000 for single and 100,000 for married, any loss that you have on an investment property, you can deduct from your other income. If your uh, income is gonna go over 50 as a single uh, to 75 and married from 100 to 150, then uh, it's gonna be uh, your, your uh, loss is not deductible, it's a starting <clears throat> decrease. You are not losing that loss. Uh, any loss that you cannot claim is going to carry forward to the uh, to uh, uh, carry over to the next year and next year, and, and it's going to uh, it's not going to be a lost loss, uh, but you cannot claim it that year. Uh, and when you get it to a positive uh, situation in your rental, then all of this loss that you had over the years it can be deductible from your uh, rental. Uh, rental positive income. That's the rule about uh, many people. They say, oh, we didn't know that uh, we cannot, uh, there is a restriction on rental income and loss. And I said, okay, that's the rule. So you didn't know, and now you know that. Uh, the next subject that uh, maybe uh, it is interesting for us is uh, you have heard about 1031 exchange. 1031 exchange, what is 1031 exchange? How does it work? And is uh, owner occupied can be 1031 exchange and, or can be changed 1031 exchange to an owner occupied. So these are all uh, subjects regarding 1031 exchange. 1031 exchange, uh, if you don't know about that, it means that you have an investment property, you have a rental property, you bought it, uh, well, let's just throw a number, you bought it for 100,000 and now it is old and you decide to change that one and sell that one, buy another rental property. So in that case, uh, if you bought it for 100,000, now you're selling for, for example, 500,000, and you have 400,000 capital gain, and you, sell, you, uh, you have 60 days, you have six months, three months before that to start it, or three months after, or six months after, to introduce another uh, property as an investment and uh, but the property that uh, the new property that you're buying because you sold the previous one 500,000 you cannot buy a property for 300,000 it should be at least 500,000 or more so you take the money and you buy another investment property in that case the previous situation you had a you had 400,000 gain and you had to pay capital gain tax on that, a long-term capital gain. But since you are buying another rental property and renting, then you are gonna skip the capital gain taxes. So you're not gonna pay taxes on 400,000 because you're buying another. That's why they call it 1031 exchange. And if I wanted to continue, just let's just put it that you bought another property for 500, you sold your property, you bought another newer property for 500. Then one, one day you said, okay, I'm tired of rental and managing that. I'm going to se sell uh, the second one and I'm just going to take the cash. So if you sell the second one for 700,000 and you bought it for 500, the money from the other one, you made 200 here and you made 400 before, so you are gonna subject to tax on $600,000. It's a difference between the first one that you bought is 100,000 and the second one that you are selling 700. So you are skipping tax, and, uh, but if one day you decided to uh, sell it and cash it and get out of the rental investment, then you are going to be subject to 600,000 cap long-term capital gain tax. That's 
they call it 1031 exchange to skip taxes as long as you stay in the same business rental property and you skip that taxes. This is how it works. Uh, uh, I had a question from a client two weeks, three weeks ago that said, uh, can I, uh, uh, it's owner occupied, can I do 1031 exchange? I'm gonna sell it and I'm gonna buy another one as uh, my uh, main residence. Can I skip taxes? I said, no, nope, this is not about the uh, personal property. It is about rental property. Uh, we have all, we, uh, as a married, we can uh, single 250, uh, cap 250,000 capital gain is gonna, if you are living in the house, the last two years of the last, the two years of last five years, you're not gonna pay taxes uh, for single 250, married 500,000, but you cannot say that I don't want to pay any taxes if you're making $1 million gain because I wanted to use 1031 exchange. So any question about 1031 exchange? Oh, I have a question. Sure. Um, if, uh, let's just say, okay, we have a rental and then we have the residence. Okay. Um, the residence uh, is a newer home and the rental, or, which is a, a older home. So could you actually um, decide to move into the rental, have those tenants move out? Now you live in that rental. Now the new home that you had, you make that a rental. Could okay. you stay in that um, uh, the older home for so many years and sell that and evade um, taxes? Oh. In that way, I mean, you probably were applying to that, but maybe you could uh, clarify that for me. Sure. It is a really interesting question. I like that. Uh, people used to do that uh, before 2009. Uh, people uh, had a rental. They used to go back to the rental and uh, live in that rental for two years and take advantage of the two years of last five years and say, okay, I lived in that house uh, two years of the last five, I'm gonna sell it and no capital gain. Uh, and they, people were doing that. But in 2009, that was a loophole. 2009 IRS uh, cashed that one and they said, nope, you cannot do that. You can go back to the old house and live in that. The way that they're gonna calculate uh, how much capital gain you can skip is uh, it's gonna be a fraction. Bottom of the fraction is how many years you own that property. Okay, I bought it that day and right now is 20 years. Okay, the bottom is 20 years. How many years you leave yourself in that property? Because all of the properties, uh, rental property, uh, we, I have a rental property, but we leave, for example, three, four years and then we bought another one that we are right now and rent it out. And the, the upper number is that, okay, I lived at all of the years from the beginning that you bought it until the time that you are selling. Okay, I lived two years before, I live right now three years, then it's gonna be five. So five over 20, five over 20, so you can uh, five over 20, you can, you can take advantage of 25% of capital gain waived. So you cannot say of you're married and 500,000, no. So for that property that you move in, you can take advantage of 500, you 125,000 is gonna be tax-free. And the rest, uh, if you're making half a million, uh, making half a million gain, you cannot take half a million as your res primary resident and say, I'm not gonna pay taxes on half a million. Uh, the, the, the fraction is five over 20. If you live in that house five years, over 20 years that you own that, you are gonna, 25% uh, of capital gain is tax-free. Excellent. Uh, one more question. What sure. about if you were in your residence, maybe you didn't have a rental, and now you sell this home, which has you know appreciated, and now you want to buy another home, uh, what capital gains would apply to the home that you sold and, and 
how would how would that fit into buying the new home it doesn't the new home doesn't matter at all uh, if if it's not rental and you're talking about your main resident right. it is all about that how much you bought it and if you live two years at least last five years how much you bought it and if you did some additional expenses to that house let's just uh, throw a number you bought it for uh, 500,000 and you remodel major remodeling not painting, for example, or carpet. No, that, not that. So you may you uh, add another room to that major. Uh, when you sell it, you said, okay, I bought it for 500,000. I spent 50,000 for additional room. So your base is not, depreciation doesn't come to this one. Depreciation is always on rental problem. You say that, okay, this house cost me 500 plus 50,000 uh, addition, 550. I'm selling that for one million dollars, and you th then you can deduct all of the sales price, uh, paying uh, com commission to the real estates, uh, escrow pay uh, company, all of the expenses for selling that. You deduct that one from your sales price. Then, if the difference is less than five hundred, you are not going to pay taxes. If it's more than five hundred, the additional over the five hundred, you are going to pay long term capital gain tax. Okay. Oh, great. So you're paying. Uh, the capital gains on greater than five hundred thousand. Exactly, exactly. Right. But Thank all you very much. consider that you need to, if you uh, to the cost, you need to put additional uh, remodeling, major remodeling, and also deducting uh, sales uh, costs that you are involved. Great. Thank you. Sure. No more question. I don't see any, but I think oh. you're okay. You're okay. And the other subject that I wanted to talk and I'll let you know, it's about gift and inheritance taxation. Uh, it's interesting that well, if you give, uh, if you give somebody, uh, the person who is, who is receiving doesn't have any responsibility, anything. So the, with the donor, we are in charge for that. Uh, the limit for 2022 was 16,000. If you, uh, and 2023 is 17,000. If you are gifting uh, uh, people, um, different people, 17,000, you don't have to do anything. So, because you are just paying the limit. If you are paying people more than 17,000, you have to file a gift tax and form 709. Uh, the gift tax, doesn't mean that you are going to pay taxes. The gift tax uh, filing deadline is June 30th. So they wanted to track you to see during the, your life how much you paid uh, uh, gift and how much inheritance are you leaving for your children or uh, whoever you are going to give the money. So uh, by filing gift tax 709, IRS is going to track you, okay, Hedy in 2023 uh, gave a gift 100,000. 17,000 is going to, going to be free. And then they're going to track that, okay, Hedy gave 83,000 in 2023. In my lifetime, they're going to add all those numbers. And with my inheritance that I'm going to leave it, so in 2022, it was the tax-free up to 12 million 60,000. Right now in 2023, that's 12 million 920,000. So uh, IRS is gonna track those and at the uh, uh, date of the debt, if uh, my, the amount that I gifted and inheritance is less than these threshold right now, these are the numbers, then my inheritance to my kids are gonna be tax-free. If it's more than that, well, they need to pay the difference, uh, taxes on the difference. One thing that I always uh, uh, questioned by my clients that, oh, I received a, a IRA from my parents and I got a 1099 right now that I need to pay taxes. Yes, if, if we leave anything to our kids, that if it's a pre-tax and we, we haven't paid taxes on that, 
when they get that money, they have to declare that and pay, put on their taxes and pay taxes. So, for example, bank account, saving, checking account, they're tax free. Houses are tax free up to 12 million 900. But any pre tax uh, uh, inheritance is going to be taxable. And p kids that they are going to get it, whoever get it, uh, they have 10 years to use up that money. They cannot say it. it's not like a person, uh, their uh, uh, own retirement. Uh, that they uh, have, they can take it after 59 and a half or until 72. No, uh, when you get uh, uh, inheritance as a taxable money, uh, you have 10 years uh, time to withdraw. You can sit on that for two, three, four years, but uh, when you get to 10 years, you have to withdraw money. Uh, it should be zero by the end of the 10 year. That's the inheritance and gift. And I don't know well, if you have question about uh, whatever I talk right now. I don't know, uh, do you want me to, uh, because uh, this is uh, the presentation that I had. This is more for people that they are going to start a, a, a business. Uh, if you have, uh, this is the slide. If you have any question about this, I can start explaining what is the difference between Schedule C, LLC, LLP, C corporation and S corporation. If you are interested in those kind of categories, I can talk about that. Just let me know if people want. To... Yeah, sorry, not in the background, but we do have a couple of questions in the chat. Sure. Um, is the gift limit per person receiving the gift or all two? Yeah, per uh, yeah, receiving per uh, receiving people. Yeah, you can you can give different people. 17, 17, then you, you don't need to fight anything. It's uh, 17,000 per person. Not Great. And then there was also, if I pay for long-term care insurance, can they deduct that or at least a percentage of the amount if they are still self-employed? If they paid for insurance? Long-term care insurance. Uh, no. If you are self-employed, long-term cannot be deducted. If you are paying for your uh, current medical, if you are so self-employed and you don't have any medical and you buy it, you can deduct that from, from your self-employment. But uh, long-term, no, it's not deducted. Got it. Um, a comment regarding RMDs, the bank which had the SEP IRA retirement account sends a yearly notice of how, they will, what, how much they will need to take out by December 31st of each year. Uh, that was just a comment, not a question. Okay. Um, and then from someone else, how do I begin paying taxes quarterly and why would they begin paying taxes quarterly? Okay. Uh, the reason that we pay, uh, you know, the, the rule is that we earn money, we pay taxes. When we are employed at UCSD, when we were employed at UCSD yeah, or any uh, other employer, uh, they just, you know, you know that. Every paycheck, the tax withholding, federal withholding, and California withholding, social security and Medicare. And employer is going to transfer those quarterly to the, to the IRS. So that's our responsibility. When we are self-employed uh, and we are making money, every quarter we have, because IRS said, okay, you earn money. Uh, uh, and you have, for example, 25,000 minus expenses, you have to pay taxes, estimate taxes. So that's the IRS rule and California. Earning money, paying taxes at the same time. You cannot wait one year and when you're filing your taxes, uh, then uh, you pay estimate taxes, at, uh, you pay taxes at that time. Or even if you pay late, uh, it happened, uh, it's interesting that it happened to me a few years ago. Uh, I just said, why should I pay? Because I have corporation for doing taxes. Why should I pay taxes uh, in April or June? Because you know that it's April 15, June 15, September 15, and January next year 15. Why should I pay that? Uh, during, in December, I just calculated and I paid 15,000 estimated taxes. So when I filed <clears throat> our taxes, we got about three, 4,000 back because it was too much taxes that we paid. But they penalized me uh, about 150, something like that. I don't vaguely remember. Uh, I, I re remember vaguely that it was 150. And when I got the refund, it was 150 less. And I was shocked that 
we got a refund. Why didn't why did they deduct 150? Then I got a letter from them that okay, yeah, it was a penalty because not paying taxes during the year. Uh, it means that we have to calculate and pay quarterly to them. And I learned my less, lesson that uh, that time, and I'm paying quarterly. The, if the question was how to pay, it, correct, uh, Vanya? Okay, you go. You you go to irs.gov and the first page that you open it, it says payment. And you click on the payment, it takes you, is that business or personal? You can say personal, uh, if it's personal. You click on that, it's gonna take you to the next page. I said, what is the reason for the payment? And the Dropbox is gonna give you 10 different options. Uh, tax I owe uh, IRS, uh, 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 penalty. Well, and then one option is estimated tax. And when you click on it, you choose estimated tax, it's going to give you 2023. Then it's just continue. It's really straightforward. You continue, they ask for uh, your social security identification and address and everything. At the end, you are going to say, I'm going to pay this much. You can always, you can pay by, uh, through the, your direct uh, banking system. There is no fee, but you can always pay a social, uh, I think that the credit card, but there is going to be four or 5% fee even if you owe taxes you can pay with credit card but it's going to be inter, uh, uh, a fee for that so it's really easy and for the, the same thing for california you go to franchise tax board ftb.ca.gov franchise tax board and so and the first place they make a payment and uh, remember that uh, the amount that you need to pay is not going to be uh, taxes on how much you make so you uh, if you're self-employed okay three months i made twenty thousand, but i my cost was fifteen thousand. so and the net is five thousand you pay estimate tax on five thousand and calculation is that uh, depends on uh, what your bracket is going to be uh, if your bracket is twenty percent at the end of the year so five thousand right now you pay one thousand uh, tax to the, to uh, the federal depends on your married single all of those things you need to calculate that and you just pay something but the deadline again is April 15 uh, right now is April 18 and right now they say that you don't need to pay that I wanted to say that so you don't need to pay any estimated taxes until October 16 based based on the IRS website and California uh, but in a normal year. Uh, it is April 15, June 15, September 15, and January 15, a year after. Thank you. Question, is the 10-year limit on inherited raise something recent? Uh, this member oh. got one about 12 years ago, and the bank hasn't said anything. No, as much as I know, my clients, uh, I had a few clients that they had, and I in, interesting that I had the discussion two weeks ago, with the financial, their financial planner, uh, it was I was on a conference call, and it has been always that uh, there is a ten years limit to withdraw uh, your the uh, taxable retirement from the from your parents when they passed away. Uh, my understanding, it was it's not something new. Are there any final questions for Hidi before he uh, closes? Nanita, or is this James Johnson? Yeah, uh, if I could ask one more question. I think you probably already um, mentioned it, but if you could repeat um, the example of, say you have a rental property, you've had it for 20 some years and you decide, okay, I'm, I'm done with it. I just want to sell it. If you sell it, is it still under the same um, criteria where you would pay capital gains on the anything greater than 500,000 or how again how would it work for a rental um selling if it was if it was completely a rental property uh you are going to pay taxes on everything if you're if you bought a, a, a condo for 100,000 and you immediately started renting that one so and then you sell it for 500 uh, and then you have well whatever expenses that is depreciation all of those it's not a simple answer but to a simple answer to you if it's a 100 percent rental property 
whatever you make it, you need to pay a ca long-term capital gain tax. I see. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, final, final question from H.J. Walker. TurboTax says that they can do taxes for free. How is this possible? Yeah, you know that uh, there is many companies that they offer. For example, your bank, maybe you go to your bank, log in, and there is a logo. Uh, but if you, the example that you go, for example, the easiest one that you go to Costco and there is software over there, you pay, for example, I don't know how much, uh, uh, you pay $50, for example. You have already paid for the federal uh, because that's, I know that. My clients, they told me, you buy the software if it's not free, uh, but if you buy software, you pay something, when you are going to find California, they are going to charge you again. So uh, those software that they are online and they are free, offering free, for example, I think US e-credit, you know, before they used to, uh, even now maybe, they offer all the use uh, or so the software for free. But uh, yeah, there, there's contract between the banks and those, they are making money some, uh, somewhere else. But always i heard from the client that they started to, uh, coming to me they said that california you have to pay 60 70 dollars to file taxes even if uh, it's free for the federal but it is possible okay well thank you so much for joining us i know we're uh, we gave you one minute more of questions but thank you so much um do you have any final comments okay okay and i see your contact information is up as well as your email. Thank you so much for sharing that. Sure. Thank you very much for having me and have a uh, good year. And if you're waiting until October, okay, you have additional time. If you're filing, uh, it's going to be only two weeks from now. It's going to be Tuesday, the 18th. Thank you. Have yeah. a nice day, everyone. And Hadi, just before you wrap up, is it okay to post this recording on our YouTube channel or do you prefer yeah. we... Sure. Great. So that'll be available for everyone. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Goodbye.